Greetings students and welcome to my very first video on convolution. In this lesson, we're going to start by discussing convolution and then we're going to end by proving the convolution theorem for Fourier transforms. Let's begin the lecture by introducing convolutions. Suppose I have two functions f of t and g of t. The convolution of f and g is defined as f star g equals the integral from negative infinity to infinity of f of tau times g of t minus tau d tau. I won't be spending the next 18 minutes showing you the convolution of sine and cosine in an effort to demonstrate that the convolution of two actual functions is an actual quantity, but I will take a brief detour to talk about the idea or intuition behind a convolution. I'm going to copy paste the definition of convolution here for easy reference. Now, in order to understand the intuition behind a convolution, I'm going to draw an example function for f. And what I'll do is that I'll let f look like this, uh, a box. The next thing I'm going to do is draw g of tau as another box somewhere out here. So it looks the same as f of tau, it's just displaced a little bit. Now the whole idea behind convolution is that we take g of negative tau, we take g of negative tau, which is the reflection of g of tau along the vertical axis, and sweep it to the right according to the time t at which we're evaluating the convolution. And as we're sweeping g to the right, we're multiplying f and g everywhere along the sweep and integrating that result from negative infinity to infinity to get the value of our convolution at time t. So let me show you what we'll get as we take the convolution of f and g. As we start sweeping g of negative tau, this is essentially the same as sweeping g of t minus tau, but with t equals zero. So as t increases, our function g will move more and more to the right. So for instance, when t is equal to 0.5, we might be at g of 0.5 minus tau right over here. Now if g of 0.5 minus tau is all the way back here, then when we multiply g and f at this time point, we'll get zero because the non-zero part of g, the box, is hovering over the zero part of f. Similarly, the box part of f is hovering over the zero part of g, so multiplying g and f when they're so far apart will give you zero, and the integral of zero from negative infinity to infinity is zero. So this means that the convolution of f and g will remain zero as long as g and f don't overlap their non-zero portions. So from time zero all the way until the time at which g just starts touching f, the convolution of f and g will remain zero because the product of f and g is zero when they're not touching, and so the definite integral of that product is also zero. But what happens as t increases to a point where g starts to overlap with f? Well, in that case, when you multiply together the portions of g and f that actually overlap, you get a non-zero number. And when you integrate that non-zero number, you end up with a positive value. Granted, that positive value isn't very large, but it's positive nonetheless. So the convolution of f and g will actually start to creep up as g starts to overlap f. And as g continues to sweep across f, the region where g overlaps f increases. And as the overlapping region increases, the convolution integral increases until g and f completely overlap each other. And at this point, when g and f completely overlap each other, the convolution integral will peak. What happens next? Well, as g continues to sweep towards the right, then at larger t, the overlap between f and g decreases and the value of the convolution integral therefore drops. This continues until f and g no longer overlap and the convolution goes back down to zero. Now notice here that I started sweeping at t equals zero and essentially continued until t equals infinity, which means that my answer for the convolution isn't complete because I haven't swept the function g from t equals negative infinity to t equals zero. But for this particular problem, you can imagine that if I started my g all the way to the left at negative infinity and swept it forward until it got to t equals zero, there would be no point within that sweep where g and f overlapped. Therefore, my convolution would be zero for all negative values of t. But this is what you have to do for a convolution. You have to actually sweep it from negative infinity to infinity, not just from zero to infinity. 
So this is what the convolution of these two box functions looks like, a triangle essentially, and zero everywhere outside that triangle. The convolution rises as the two boxes start to overlap, it peaks at maximum overlap and then falls as the overlap starts decreasing. Now the whole time I was constructing this convolution by sweeping g across f from t equals negative infinity to infinity, there was a common theme behind how I was computing the convolution. And that common theme was that the greater the overlap between f and g, the greater the magnitude of the convolution. So in regions where f and g weren't overlapping, the convolution was zero. And in regions where f and g were maximally overlapping, the convolution was maximum. This is because when the overlap was maximized, the product between f and g was maximized over a larger range. And so the integral of that product, the convolution, would also be maximized. And this is essentially the intuition behind the convolution, that the convolution between f and g tells you the degree to which f and g overlap at each time point from negative infinity to infinity, as you have g sweeping across the domain at that time point. You can extend this intuition to any functions f and g. In fact, I invite you to use this intuition to draw the convolution of two more complicated functions. I specifically chose box functions here because they're relatively simple to understand. Anyway, hopefully that explanation wasn't too convoluted. Ha ha. Let's move on to proving the convolution theorem for Fourier transforms. The convolution theorem states that the Fourier transform of the convolution of two functions is the product of the Fourier transforms of the individual functions. It's an incredibly useful theorem that comes in handy when solving differential equations by Fourier transforms. Anyway, let's start the proof. We'll begin by writing the expression for the Fourier transform of the convolution. Now how we'll prove this theorem is we'll evaluate the Fourier transform of the convolution do some algebra and show that it's equal to the product of the Fourier transforms. But before we even begin the proof, I have to define the Fourier transform. Recall that the Fourier transform of a function h is the integral from negative infinity to infinity of the exponential of negative 2 pi i, i is the imaginary number, times omega, that's the variable we're transforming into, times t, times h of t dt. This means that we can write the Fourier transform of the convolution of f and g as the following, using the definition of convolution above. Now what's convenient here is that the integral in brackets is with respect to tau, and the exponential term is only with respect to t, so it's effectively a constant for the bracketed integral. And because it's a quote unquote constant, we can move it inside the bracketed integral, in which case this is what we'll get. Now this expression on the right is a double integral, and assuming that f, g, and the exponential are all nice and continuous, we can switch the order of integration according to Fubini's theorem. So now I'm integrating with respect to t first, and then I'm integrating with respect to tau. Let's use square brackets to actually distinguish these separate integrations. Now the nice thing here is that f of tau is a constant with respect to t, so I can take it outside of the bracketed integral, which is an integral with respect to t. What I'll do next is replace the t minus tau in the inside integral with some variable u. In that case, we can express t as tau plus u, and we can write du as dt. And that's because tau is effectively a constant here when we're evaluating the inside integral. That's why there's no tau in the expression for du. Anyway, when we carry out the substitution, here's what we'll get. Note that I've expanded out the exponential already, and we can see that this exponential in terms of tau can also be taken outside the integral. Now look at what we have here. The inside integral is fully in terms of u, and the outside integral is fully in terms of tau. That means the inside integral is effectively a constant with respect to the outside integral. And so we can split them up into two integrals multiplying each other. The first integral would then just be the Fourier transform of g by definition of Fourier transforms. And the second integral would then just be the Fourier transform of f by definition of Fourier transforms. And since we started with the Fourier transform of the convolution of f and g, we've effectively proven the convolution theorem, that the Fourier transform of the convolution of two functions is the product of their Fourier transforms. 
Now just before I end, let me put in a quick word for Laplace transforms and their convolutions. Laplace transforms also have their own convolution theorem that I'm not going to prove here. It's pretty much the same as the convolution theorem for Fourier transforms, just that for Laplace transforms you have your independent variable t going from zero to infinity, and in Fourier transforms your t goes from negative infinity to infinity. So for instance, if you're solving an initial value problem, so an ordinary differential equation in time which starts at zero and goes till infinity, it's recommended to use the Laplace transform and apply the convolution theorem for Laplace transforms. However, if you're solving a boundary value problem where your independent variable can be negative, it's better to use Fourier transforms and their corresponding convolution theorem. Anyway, that does it for this video. I'll finish off by thanking the following patrons for supporting me at the $5 level or higher. I've linked my Patreon account in the description so you can check it out. So that's it. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Khan, signing out.